Hey guys, Jake from Make Science Fun here. Thanks for joining me today. Today's episode, we're looking at motion, and more specifically, Newton's first law of motion. Now, Newton's first law says that an object in motion will continue at a constant velocity, so same speed, same direction, unless a net force or an overall force acts on it. Now, we're just going to be looking at the first part of the law today, the tendency of a body at rest to stay at rest. How surprising would it be if like this rock started moving without anything? Ah! <laughs> uh, string, daughter, net force, that way. <laughs> Ooh, pull the string. <laughs> it accelerates that way with the force that way. Now Newton was a very important scientist. He was born in 1642. Scientists around his era were Galileo, Kepler, Bernoulli, Boyle, Halley, Van Leeuwenhoek, Sir Isaac Newton. He was a great mathematician, a great physicist, known for his three laws on motion, uh, the law of gravitation which he described, calculus, optics, invented a uh, reflecting telescope, inertia. A body at rest will tend to stay at rest, and a body in motion will tend to stay in motion. Take for example this bowling ball. So it's got a lot of mass. It's probably got about 10 kilograms of mass. It's got, it's got a lot of inertia. Now it's hanging here by this double wire. This double wire is strong, but it's not that strong. In fact, it's pretty close to its breaking strain now. I've got exactly the same wire hanging off it here. Exactly the same wire. Now I'm going to tug on this wire very quickly and very hard. What's your prediction? What do you think is going to happen? Surely you might think that this wire is going to break because the force that this wire is carrying is not only the weight of the bowling ball but also the force that I pull down with. But which one actually breaks? Ha! Oh, that's a relief. I thought I was going to have a fallen bowling ball. The bottom rope broke because this bowling ball, it's got so much mass, it's got a tendency to stay at rest. And so, when I pulled it down quickly, because of its tendency to stay at rest, was the bottom wire that broke. What do you think might happen though if I pull slowly? Hmm? Now if I pull slowly, oh, this could be bad. I've got to get ready to catch it. Pulling it slowly. Okay, the top one breaks. Because as I said, the top one carries both the weight of the ball and the force pulling down. I might get a special guest to help with a few demonstrations. I've got Sam in his pajamas today. Hey mate, how are you? Good. That's good. Hey, we're looking at Newton's first law. And the first part of the law says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Okay, so I've got myself a card here. I'm going to put the card on my finger. I'm going to get a coin. The coin on the card. Now the coin is the object that's got inertia. It's going to stay. It's got a tendency to stay at rest. Are you ready? I'm going to flip the card. You're watching, Sam? Hey! Look! The coin stayed at rest. Shall I do it again? I'll do it. Hey, there it is. Stay there. Lego hey. <laughs> man. Yeah. It's got a tendency to stay where it is. It is at rest. It's got a tendency to stay at rest. At the moment, there's no net force. Gravity is pulling down it but the ring is pushing up on you. So those two forces are equal but opposite. Now pull that ring away. There's no left or right force. The frictional force of when I pull it away is so small, there's no force that way. It's very, very small. However, which force am I taking away? I'm up. removing. Up. That's it, I'm removing the ring. Up. And so you'll only have one force acting on him, which is gravity. And gravity will accelerate him down, straight down, that's why you'll go. Ah! Oh, I'm too young to die. 
I can't even swim. Ah! So Sam, we've got Eagle Piggle, and Eagle Piggle is at the stoplights, minding his own business. And this Jeep, not watching what it's doing, okay, coming driving along, and slams, slams into Eagle Piggle. <laughs> and Eagle Piggle says, ah, my head was thrown backwards. Sorry, Eagle Piggle, your head was not thrown backwards. Your body was pushed forward by the car and your head oh, no. stayed where okay. it was. I've got to wear this neck brace because I was in this car accident where I was hit from behind and it caused my head to be thrown backwards. Ah! Oh, sorry Eagle Piggle. Your head wasn't thrown backwards at all. What? Your head is a body at rest and the car slammed into you, which caused your body to be pushed forward, leaving your head behind. Then it, the muscles pulled your head forward, causing it to whip forward like so, and then the muscles pulled back on it, causing it to whip back. So your head wasn't pushed backwards to start with, your body was pushed forward. Oh, thanks so much for explaining that to me, Jacob. That's all right, Eagle Piggle. That's why a headrest is such an important safety feature in a car, because the headrest pushes your head forward along with your body, keeping them in line with each other. Check this out. I was drilling a hole for this hook, and this is what happened. Whoa! <laughs> okay, Sam, some other real-world applications of Newton's first law that an object at rest stays at rest. Sometimes on the news you see these giant chimneys that are being demolished and they put explosive charges down the bottom and then they explode them and you, you expect to see the chimney falling across like that. But what actually happens is it breaks up the top because this section of the chimney is at rest and it tends to stay at rest. Let's have a look. <laughs> See how it didn't just push over? See how it sort of stayed vertical? Can I do it? Give it another go. Ready? Oh. 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 Also, big electric motors, they've got these big rotors. They've got a lot of inertia. They've got a lot of mass. They're very lazy. And when you first get them going, well, they've got a tendency to stay at rest. And so they take a lot of electricity to actually get them spinning. Newton's first law almost killed me. One day I was down at the bottom of our property and I was clearing the bush. I was in the tractor and I was pushing the shrubs over and the, and the weeds and that sort of thing. And then I saw this big gum tree. It was gigantic. It was dead, dead as a doornail. And I thought, oh, I might just push that tree down with my tractor. I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, you'd think that maybe if you go slowly, you'd be able to just push it over. Bye. I mean, if you push the tree over, obviously it will slowly push over like that. It was such a big tree, Sam, that I had to drive really fast into it, really fast to try and smash it over. But I'd forgotten about Newton's first law because at the top of the tree, there was all these dead branches and the top of the tree was stationary. It wasn't moving and things not moving have a tendency to stay at rest. And so when I slammed into this tree, the bottom part of the tree pushed over, but the top part of the tree actually broke off. And you know what? It actually fell and it just almost hit me on the head because I forgot about its first law. How stupid is that, eh? Okay, one final demonstration. Here we've got a wine glass at rest another wine glass at rest. The wine glasses have got a tendency to stay at rest. This rod is at rest. It's got a tendency to stay at rest. I'm going to belt it really hard, really quickly with this broomstick. Are you ready? Let's see what happens. One, two, Broke right there. Is that push down caused to snap and 
simple like that. Anyway, thanks heaps for joining me. Stay tuned for Newton's First Law, part two, coming up soon. Bye.